So I was mixing up my gin and vodka smoothie this morning when I paused to congratulate myself on the work I've done to promote the importance of Captain Marvel and the genius of The Last Jedi. But this got me thinking about other movies and TV shows that have come out in recent years and how the talented and creative minds of Hollywood have been working hard to right the wrongs of the past bringing old franchises into the modern era for a new generation of audiences, or just straight up remaking movies that didn't hit the mark first time around. And of course, using them as vehicles to push political agendas that can start important conversations all across the world. So I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at a few examples of movies and TV shows that have been given a much needed makeover, so you too can appreciate how much better things are now. Terminator the Terminator series is one of the most iconic franchises in all of cinema, spanning four decades and five movies with a sixth one in the works, and launching the career of Edward Furlong into the stratosphere. Even Christian Bale couldn't contain his excitement at being part of Terminator Salvation. Oh, good for you! And how was it? I hope it was good because it's useless now, isn't it? And it's fair to say that Arnold Schwarzenegger has never looked better than his role in Terminator Genesis. But things haven't always been this good, of course. Terminator 2 was an okay movie, I guess. But one of the things that really let it down was Linda Hamilton's portrayal of Sarah Connor. The problem is that she just doesn't have the edge needed to play such a strong character, and it's clear from the way she handles weapons and her overall physical condition that she wasn't really taking the role seriously. But fortunately, Terminator Genesis provided a solution in the form of this small child, proving that even little girls are perfectly capable of kicking ass and fighting shape-shifting robots from the future. I mean, look how confident she is firing this gun. It's like there's no longer a boundary between the weapon and the actor using it. And also take note of the sheer physical presence she brings to the role. It's clear she really put in the gym time to prepare for this movie, proving that she was a far superior choice to play this iconic character. Her enthusiasm and dedication to her craft is rivaled only by that of her co-stars, like the always charismatic Jai Courtney as Kyle Reese, who bears such an uncanny resemblance to the original actor that it's like we've stepped back in time by 30 years. Not to mention the strikingly compelling and original plot, which is both intensely personal, yet deceptively complex, easily making sense of the complex business of time travel without relying on technobabble or contrived writing. But there's something I need you to remember. A message. Who do I tell? Yourself. So I firmly believe that with movies like Genesis under its belt, the Terminator franchise is sure to go from strength to strength, as we can see from the upcoming Terminator 6, Doctor Who. Now if there's one thing that sci-fi TV shows have historically been bad at, it's exploring present day social issues through a science fiction lens that makes us think about them in a whole new light. Another thing that's been chronically lacking is strong and interesting female characters, and no show has suffered more from this than Doctor Who. So it was with great excitement that we learned the 13th Doctor would be played by a female actor this time, finally allowing women to set foot in the TARDIS. Now you might think the show would have just continued the same tired science fiction adventures to other worlds, exploring the furthest reaches of space and time. But the new series of Doctor Who took the bold decision to set most of their episodes right here on Earth during the last 500 years of human history. This allowed the writers to explore such varied and enthralling topics as white men being racist, white men being sexist because they're secretly gay, White men exploiting local cultures. White men abandoning their children. White men being greedy corporate executives. And white men giving birth in comic fashion. So it should come as no surprise that with such varied and interesting subject matter, the fan reactions to the latest series were just as enthusiastic as you'd expect. And everyone was thrilled to learn that the show had been renewed for another season in 2020. The 13th Doctor is sure to go down in the annals of TV history as one of the best decisions the BBC ever made, and I confidently predict this beloved show will be around for many years to come. Especially when they leave a two-year gap between seasons. Star Wars 
Now, it's no secret that The Last Jedi cleverly subverted all of our expectations when it hit theatres a year ago, but when you really think about it, the entire Disney Star Wars era has been one big exercise in subversion. Now, I could talk at length about how The Force Awakens told a story that was truly fresh and different, how Solo felt so meaningful and impactful, or how The Last Jedi was so respectful to the world created by George Lucas, but for me the thing that truly makes the Disney era of Star Wars so special are the characters. See, the original trilogy gave its characters genuine struggles and failures to overcome, dangerous enemies who dealt them crushing defeats that forced them to grow and learn from their failures, and taught them important lessons that helped them become wiser and better people. But the new movies have found a far more efficient way of doing things, because why waste time showing how your main character becomes a hero when they can just be a hero right away? It's genius, really. Everyone loves a winner, so if your main character easily wins and succeeds at everything they do, how can you possibly go wrong? And if you really want to hammer home the point, just have your character easily defeat and humiliate the original trilogy protagonist. That'll be sure to endear her to fans. It's this unique combination of patient, daring character development and respect for the originals that really helps make Rey even more likeable and relatable. And the best part is that it teaches audiences important lessons that will serve them well in their own lives, such as Your elders possess no wisdom or insights worth listening to. Their decades of life experience are less important than your opinions. Everyone that matters will automatically like, respect and trust you. You don't need to work or struggle for anything, you're already good enough to succeed. Failure isn't an option, because it's impossible to fail at anything anyway. Learning new skills is easy, it just kind of happens. Everyone else in the world is less intelligent and determined than you. So you see, with this kind of winning formula, it's easy to see why fans of the original Star Wars trilogy have warmly embraced not only Rey, but the entire Disney Star Wars series, and I confidently predict that Episode 9 will be even more successful because of it. Ghostbusters Ghostbusters is one of my favourite childhood movies, the story of three New York scientists and some other guy who start up a business catching ghosts, only to end up in a battle to save the entire world, is one I could happily watch again and again. But there's always room for improvement, and as funny as Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis were at the time, with the benefit of hindsight, it's easy to see the shortcomings of this movie. The chemistry between these three men just wasn't there, and it's become clear to me that the dry, witty, sarcastic humour failed to impress audiences. So it was with great enjoyment that we learned Ghostbusters was going to be rebooted for a new generation of moviegoers, and this time they were going to get it right. They hired the very best people they could find, like a bunch of obscure SNL comedians, and a writer-director who was so excited by the project that he refused it twice before finally accepting. Now as we all know, reaction to the first trailer was overwhelmingly positive, but still people wondered if the finished movie could possibly live up to our expectations. Well, we found out. How could Ghostbusters 2016 not be a success, with hugely successful comedians like Leslie Jones, Kate McKinnon and Melissa McCarthy behind it? Not to mention the creative powerhouse that is Paul Feig pulling directing duties. Any movie whose script is more than 50% ad-libs is sure to be a winner. And I don't know about you, but one of my biggest gripes about the original was the distinct lack of musical dance numbers. Well, Paul and his friends sure put that one right. I also have to give props to the way the cast and crew dealt with negative fan reactions and criticism. Their conduct was both highly professional and displayed great strength of character, particularly Paul Feig. I mean really, with such a humble personality and down-to-earth appearance, it's impossible not to warm to this guy. The box office returns spoke for themselves. People just couldn't get enough of the rebooted Ghostbusters, and it's no surprise there was talk of a sequel within a matter of weeks. Shira. Now, living in Scotland, I can tell you that we're all about breaking down gender stereotypes over here. Take our First Minister, for example, who's both a highly successful politician and a woman, and yet effortlessly manages to look like neither. 
So it was with great excitement that I learned that Shira, another TV show from my childhood, was being brought back to entertain today's generation of children. Only this time she wasn't going to be constrained by such outdated concepts as gender. And I don't know about you, but I was blown away by the character artwork when it was revealed. Definitely a big improvement over the original. It's both empowering and inspiring to know that 12-year-old boys can now be princesses of power as well. And I'm sure this new incarnation of the character will be just as iconic and popular as his female predecessor. So as you can see, our entertainment industry really is much better now than it used to be. And that's all I have for today. Go away now.